Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Silk Road's Caravan Kings. Not to be confused with Crusader Kings, this uh, ongoing video series I've been doing on the Lord Master channel here. Now, in this game, this game may remind you as we go along of the, um, of the Oregon Trail. In fact, the developer of this game says that, that he was inspired by Oregon Trail. Except it is set on the 1270s in the uh, medieval era, late medieval era, one would think. Um, so, this is around the time of Marco Polo of Venice. So, yes, we'll travel from Venice to the Far East. That's the name of the game here. Uh, I only played this once about two days before this recording so I can get a feel of it. But... You know, it's a wonder how here on the Lore Master channel that I've done a lot of Oregon Trail videos, along with a few Yukon Trail videos and uh, the Oregon Trail videos that I also did as well. Don't forget about that one. But also, I plan on doing, uh, you know, other trail videos too. But for now, consider this as like a spiritual successor of the old Mech Trail games, in a way. But, except less, you know, Death and all that. But that's just me being, uh, you know. Anyways, it's been a half a minute, minute and a half, so let's get started. New game. Yeah, this was the old safe house, so I'll just override it, because I already did my task. Now, the contract. The bearer of this note is old 18 silk, or the um, equivalent value at the time of delivery, which is not to exceed in the month. Of November in the year of our Lord 1275, in exchange of the sum of 1350 ducats shall be made available upon signature to be used for, for uh, to be used in furthering the exploration of the mysteries of the Far East and to procure such items. If the signee is unable to read them, then the text will be read to him at the expense of the Merchants Guild. Or not be him or her, because assumingly that I'm sure there'll be female gamers that may interest in playing this sort of game, especially if they found it out through me. But anyways, just sign the dotted line. Well, just sign your damn name, which of course the name's gonna be Lord Master. That's my name. Of course, if you type the number zero, it's it's an O still. So or the O that looks like a zero. See, like as I type O zero, same. Oops. Okay. okay, let's try this again. One more time. It's... What the hell is with the double name? Okay. It's Lord Master. There you go. Now stamp it. With your mark made on the contract with your debt of hands, more, you more money, and you, you more money than you ever seen, you quickly head off for supplies. Purchasing, traveling equipment, and dried foods. Supplies in hand, you head to the docks in search of fortune, intent on joining a merchant ship headed for the east. Where were you headed again? Well, for now, there's two paths that you can take. Which, again, this game came out on October 1st, 2020, so it's a relatively new game. Which, somehow, wasn't much under the radar up until to me, because... Before I pick my destination, I just want to say real quick... When I played the Oregon Trail the other day, I even had a thought in my head, which I never addressed on video. It's like, why don't we just have a Silk Road Trail? Because that would be a dream of mine, because back late last year, no, not late, like early last year, early 2020, that I watched the entire documentary series that came from Japan by NHK, the Silk Road documentary series. Even though it's kind of dated by, compared to today of what the countries of Silk Road is like today, obviously and I was really really interested of all things Silk Road especially the Sogdians which I did play as them in in a separate Crusader Kings 2 series one of the Silk Road civilizations but now here in the 1270s I'm a Latin from Venice and I'm about to go to on one path it's from Constantinople to in the steppes Steps are great open plains with huge distances between cities of tents. Their local produce are furs and pack animals. Or go on to Acre and the Far East. 
both the Holy Land and the Gateway to the Far East. The land is densely populated with short journeys between cities that does not make them any safer. The local goods are ivory. Well, since we want to get silk, and logically, silk is in China. So, we're going to go to the Far East, to Acker the Far East. So, we'll set that destination right now, after I take this drink. This may be a two-part video because it's going to be a long journey to to get to China and then back to Venice. Here's a little tutorial. This represents the supplies for your journey. Running out will cause negative effects. You use supplies once every few days, depending on your endurance skill. And before we read the event, let me continue the tutorial first. This represents your current gold, which can be used to purchase supplies, goods, camels, um, to interact and to interact with events as they appear. Current camel slash camel limit. Camel act as another person in weight limit calculations. You can also increase your camel limit by increasing your intelligence skill. The date and season tracker. It's very dangerous to travel during the winter, so you should rest to avoid it if you can. Should you aim to return to Venice before your contract expires, so Getting there is kind of like Oregon Trail with the randomness events there. But we're going to be on a bit of a rush, which is kind of like the Yukon Trail with the, um, the Klondike Gold Rush. Like, get there the earliest as you can so you could get the high score and all that. Current weight slash weight limit. You are limited in the goods you can carry by your strength, skill, and your camels. Each good or supply takes up a single space. This is your health. Higher levels of health will allow you to move faster, whereas lower levels of health may end your journey altogether. You can increase health by resting in cities. This is your morale. It is similar to health that affects your movement speed, and low morale may have negative consequences. Resting will also increase your morale. Your journal tracks your skills, relations, equipment, and inventory. Your relations affect the price of the region's produce such as furs on the steps, and how many you can purchase, etc. This button um, will take you to the menu. Saving is performed automatically to your save slot when you enter or prepare to leave town. So that concludes the tutorial. And now, our first event. Said to bring good luck and certainly, uh, certainly to bring her a few pests, it is no wonder that every ship has a cat of its own. The cat of my current vessel is taking quite a shine on me. The cat might be persuaded part of it for a price. Let's see what we got here. So we have to get there in and back before November twelve seventy five. So, how about 10? I'm going to be being a bit of a cheapskate here. The captain takes the off for a while and eventually takes the coins from me, seemingly with some reluctance. He promises that the furry sailor will be relieved of my duty at the next port. Thank you. Look at here. I got me a cat. My pet cat. I have about five cats in real life. Well, hold on. Let me do a bit of counting in my head. Six cats, actually. Three grown, uh, one mother cat, two grown, three grown up cats, and two other kittens. Is that six? Yeah, you got the map right. Anyways, one evening while resting, I hear cursing above my head. Um, I head above deck to find a sailor with a fishing rod in his hands. Noticing my inquisitiveness, he curses that he bought the rod to spare himself from the cook's wrath, as long as he discovered he can't fish to save his life. Five ducats for the rod should chew you up. The sailor is over the moon uh, with the part with the rod. Adding it to me before he even had time to count the money. Throw a couple of lines into the water to get a feel of my new one. Free food. Now I got a fishing rod.
eating away. I gathered uh, my Gato ship, which, uh, uh, which I am aboard, it uses sail as its primary method of propulsion. When, when entering ports, the sailors um, take below the desk to help row the giant ship in the port. No small task. It might be an interesting experience if you were to uh, elect to help. It could build my muscles. Next time I'm in a port, uh, I take a spot of a scrawny boy who looks like he could do with the rest. I'm uh, squeezed between the two other burly sailors who are barely concealing their shock at my decision. Pull to the beat of the drum, each pull somehow have, feeling heavier than the last. Are we there yet? So there you go. It increases the strength and uh, agility. I think that's what it was I just saw. So no, we just barely passed Laconia. Now by Crete, we're not even there yet. Hmm. There is much to be learned about the much we learned about a ship. There are many who are bored enough to teach me. Who would be best able to prepare me for the journey ahead? Well, this could have helped increase the skills a little, so. How about the navigator? The navigator seems annoyed at my mere presence. He warns not to touch the charts he has spread around the table. When I ask if I can shadow him for a while while he shushes me, pointing to the near point towards the nearby chair, the next few days are spent looking at star maps, um, staring at charts and cursing. I think I even learned something. There. It increases agility, which will increase my walking speed. Once I get on the trail. Though the galleys may be Venetian, the cruel are smattering of other cultures. It may be of some use to my journey to climb um, myself with these peoples in their ways. Well, since we're going to Acker, so. Talk to the Saracen captain. The Saracen looks at me with suspicion, as he does with all the Venetians, who spit at him as they pass. His demeanor softens when I try to speaking the uh, Turkic tongue. He corrects my pronunciation to share brief chats between his duties uh, below. He's not all bad. And that increases the Islam, Muslim opinion. So, I remember what the tutorial said. When they look highly on you, you get to make more of a profit and be willing to, you know, all that. But since we're going, obviously, Muslim-majority countries, so it's best to appeal to them before we get to China and start looking at Confucians. Don't want to think too much of the Hindus nor the Tengri, because I don't think we'll be traveling to their lands much, depending on the paths it takes us. Here we are, boys. Acker. In the Holy Land. Right. Of course, before you set off, you gotta get a camel, because you're not just gonna carry around with just food. So, here they sell camels for merchants such as myself. They are famed for their use in trade. I can purchase one for 252 ducats. One camel, please. <laughs> all the space you can have and you could sell it for a full refund but if you are strapped for cash you can always spend a month working in the city due to my relations get a job as a grocer for 90 ducks I got plenty of money my concern is well one so they have 52 in stock and one just bought two more so you better stock up on food pretty good and ivory is cheap Probably want to get a few of those too. Okay, that's the max, so ideally. Um, 50 is the way to go. So, yes, uh, we're filling it up with ivory. So that way, um, 
if we were to sell it further eastward, it could increase the selling price here, since ivory is cheap here in the Middle East. And buying silk here is expensive. You can't just buy silk right away, even though that's the goal, because this, the contract states you got to bring back 18 silk. And silk comes from China, so it's cheaper to buy it in China, in Chang'an. So, and having ivory is a bit of a necessity. But if I need more camels, I need to um, increase my intelligence. So, we just got here, so we're going to set off on the trail. So, I managed to find a caravan leaving soon for Baghdad. They say that the journey is 23 days travel away, requiring four pounds of supplies. Well, it may be overloaded right now, but I'm not taking any chances, so I'm buying all the supplies I can get. So, well, off to the trail then. Emotions seem to have boiled over in the caravan. For once, I'm not involved. I aren't involved. What started as a normal argument over the proximity of Saracen's camel to the Tatars explored to a full blown fist fight. Hey, break it up, you two! I'm not gonna waste my money on that. I'm not sure what compelled me to throw myself in between the two men, or I'm literally at each other's throats, but I could figure it out later. For now, they are equally mad at me. At least they put their differences aside after knocking me to the ground. I guess it worked. Well, it reduced my health a little. Again, it may look very slow right now, but that's why I talked to the navigator earlier back there. It's just I want to increase the walking speed. I have many companions on the Silk Roads, but they are always um, chances um, changing caravan from town to town. It dawned on me today that the only real consistency is me and my pack animals. Maybe I should show them to appreciate their company. How about a new saddle for 10 ducats? A fellow merchant on the road has a caravan that looks like it will fit the camel perfectly. My camel. Exchange a handful of coins. I unload the weight from the camel to see where the old straps have been dented into the skin. A new saddle seems to distribute the weight of my bags much more evenly. Anything for my camels. Increased strength and uh, intelligence. Oh, and by the way, uh, I'm a novice intelligence now, so I can get myself another camel. Which, once you get to Baghdad, I will do just that. More weight. My understanding that the Saracen religion forbids me from drinking alcohol, but from what I can see, the Saracen locals don't seem so restricted. Apparently, noticing my curiosity, one Saracen offers a taste. Well, I'll just take it. I'm a nice guy, all right? I take the letter, drink a flask, and have a sip. I nearly spit out with surprise. It is simply boiled wine. The Saracens laugh at the expression when I go and in fact, instead, he offers me this place to sit by the fire and uncorks another flask. Drinking. Something we could both agree on. Ups to morale and is on the opinion. Pass through Palmyra. That's what we see. At first I accidentally put on my best uh, walking stick on fire. Then the strap broke off uh, my satchel I uh, stubbed my toe on a rock for the third time this week. This is clearly God punishing me for keeping company with such low people. Oh, who to blame? Oh, just blame it on the pagan Indian. I throw down my bags and let that damned pagan know exactly what I think of him. Spring of no amount of condemnation and threats of hellfire. When he overcomes his shock, he... he so let's have it right. Let's have it right back. Uh, I yelled myself an exhaust. I sure showed him. Also, mind you, I'm from South Texas in real life. 
but I don't think every subscriber or loyal viewer knows that by now. But if you are a new viewer and watching the Silk Road some Caravan Kings game for the first time, well, welcome. Shoes crafted with leather of a giant snake which never wear out. A crystal ball that reveals my future. A cure to all ails me. A magician from far off land is plying his trade along with the road. All along the road. Selling all sorts of dark artifacts for five ducats uh, apiece. Mm. These boots do sound like a miracle. Practically snatched my new miracle boots out of a magician's hands. No more lifting along with a hole in my shoe until I make it the next city. And for such a reason, Pais, how does he do it? They still work. Not quite a novice yet. I'm doing anything for walking speed. If I see an event that indicates it as such. If I spill salt, I must do a pinch uh, over my shoulder. Sneezing before work is bad luck. Don't eat yellow snow. The, the fist of superstitions that traders hold are endless. And, and any downturn... And fortune is being blamed on my inability to hold these rules. Perhaps I should. Perhaps I should entertain these pagan ideas. I just try to follow along. I study these superstitions like the Bible. Well, the first to bless someone when they sneeze, um, and knock on wood almost any time I speak. It is fair that you are the luckiest man around. Why am I not making more money? Muzzle pinning up, Christian down. But then again, there ain't no Christians around here. So you're fine. Either my caravan master is not as experienced as he has been letting on, on or all the recent rain has expanded the banks of what should be a small stream into something resembling a slow-moving river. If only I had a gondola. Well, rough it. We gotta get going, then. I begin to coax my camel into... The uh, water as the rest of the caravan looks on bewildered. The water pushes against my body gently. The rest of the caravan begins to ascend into the supposed stream as I watch from the other bank. I'm all soggy. Still joyous. Well, the health has declined from strong to healthy. Anyways, over the past few days, a Saracen companion has been dr drawing ever weaker, um, setting up camp late into the night and breaking camp early just to keep up with my group. This morning he's been found dead, seemingly of natural causes. Already people are volunteering to oversee his affairs. Hmm. Burial, wealth, or goods, or just keep to yourself. I got enough wealth. Overseeing his bear would probably increase the because I'm pinning even more, which is probably ideal. Overseeing his goods will be like, hey, what are you doing taking this stuff? That sounds like a greedy thing to do. Or do nothing. But I shall oversee his bear. I'm a nice guy. I figured that a Christian and Saracen rights can't be so different from each other. My companions are impressed that I took on a response that was such little potential for personal profit. His um, body is occurring by the evening. I mostly just dug the hole. So he made the right call. One more event before we get to Baghdad, I assume. Yep. The desert is just about the harshest environment I can experience. Don't manage to pack enough water for myself. The camels are being forced to use their natural ability to go without water, so one day over a dune before I notice. Off in far distance, an outline of oasis. Well, we're right going to be in Baghdad soon, even at what oasis? There's the Tigris River next to it. Just head towards it anyway. I point out the oasis to my companions and they follow my direction. I venture over the steep stones and down a sheer sandy cliffs under the baking sun. Eventually I come across a small fresh water spring. 
My companions unsettled their camels and I set up a early camp and were refreshed in the cool water. Add this to the map. How about you add this one on the map? We're in Baghdad now. We're gonna need another camel. And we only had ten supplies that we taken. I mean we set off with fifty now. There you have it. Thanks to a higher Islam opinion, they sort of uh, reduced the price for a camel. Thank you very much. And if I was to settle down and work here for a month, I would get make some of that money. But I'm pretty healthy, so I should be all right. Thinking. Like, I'm thinking about taking a few furs and spices with me, you know, just in case if they need to be used for something rather than be sold for something. I mean, they're relatively cheap, but I ain't buying no silk here. They have seven of each in stock. You know, one, just five each. Modest amount. And we're good with supplies. Save this. Don't buy silk till you get the channel, right? The ivory's just to sell it further east. The furs and spices are necessities. Impossible sales. Huh? So, we managed to find a caravan leaving soup for Tehran. And they say the journey's 23 days travel away. Requiring four pounds of supplies. Yeah, that was not 20 some odd days when we went left from Acre to Baghdad. That took a lot longer than that. Kind of feeling relatively healthy, so. Let's go, partner. Partners, you're riding on a caravan. I take a moment to check on my supplies. For the past few dozen miles, I started to feel worrying and glow. What? Especially with so much of a journey ahead of you. Would it be possible with just one of the spices in my inventory to refresh enough spice to last several more days? What kind of merchant eats his wares? Could be starving in the middle of a desert while delivering honey cakes and I wouldn't eat it all. But as far as I'm concerned, goods are goods and food is food. And the twain shall never meet. Shall meet. Never the twain shall meet. We'll soon be entering into the Zagros mountain range. While my journeys often take me to the lands of varying prosperity, I've scarcely seen such poverty such as this. Across the road ahead I see masses of skeletal frames and bony, outstretched arms we felt. Though they may be heathens, is it not your Christian duty to provide aid to these fellows? Could ten ducats help? The coins glisten in their milky eyes as I hand the pieces to bony hands. Drips his other words of thanks for making off as hurley as their meager frames will take Up, up, up. I'm sure we'll definitely make it to Tehran with no incident. It is said that there are sirens in the desert. The souls of those left behind, they call the travelers trying to find a way home only to make a Lost who? Don't be such in like don't want to reduce the morale. So I'll just say there are no such things. The land of in the land full of idolaters and pagans. Is it any wonder that such myths have been allowed to propagate amongst locals? Even a distant whale, um, a distant whale uh, on a long march through the desert does not run a shiver down my back. Not as an enlightened Christian. Nonsense, I tell you. So, sorry about that. It lowered the Muslim opinion a little. I'll be sure to buy more food in Tehran. I've been fishing all the evening with to little success. Just got some little nibblers. No words worth the bait. I'm about to pack up when I feel a strong tug on the line, thinking it got snagged. 
Oh, that tree is I start to really when I see a shadow of a Goliath under the water fighting back. Oh, pull it of all you got. I pull hard on the rod, feeling it bend under the weight of the fish as I yank it, trying to send it out of the water. My companions scatter around to watch the immense struggle between me and the Leviathan. As I yank the fish, splashes water, uh, me causing the rod to slip out of my hands, it makes one final mocking leap and disappears to the depths. I'll be back! Well, damn! Lost my fishing rod. I still got my cat. Hmm. While sat watching the sun set in this street, sun, thousands of miles away from home, I take some comfort and having my cat on my lap. Seats no matter how far go. A cat is a cat and reassures that someone somewhat that your destination, no matter how foreign, can only really be so strange. Who wants a treat? I reach out a pouch uh, and pull out a sliver of dried meat and feed it to the cat. The cat purrs contently. Time to rest. <laughs> yes, these random events are very, very repetitive, but hey, at least you may never know will get you a chance to increase your skills. Again, it's a relatively new game. I'm sure it'll be updated in the future, which I'll definitely be there to make another video for it. One day of long, one long day of journeying, as I crest the hill, I notice one of my childhood companion's bags come loose from a camel and land in the ditch by the side of the camel. I run to pick it up and turn it ahead of them, but they appear not to notice. I'm not going to be that much of a greedy bastard, but I'll just say, what's in it? I could scarcely believe my eyes. An entire bundle of silk is inside. They will know least sure that it's missing. Well, what if they don't? If I keep it to myself, not only it's just silk for me, but... You know, they say, you know, silk is expensive to buy here. But if you were to sell the silk in Tehran, you could make a tidy profit. Find your keepers. As I snatch the bag and hold it close, I begin to slide in my own belongings. When the companion shouts out to me, I make a quick uh, red-faced plea, claiming that I'm about to return it. Luckily, um, since they had had to try and pass it off as their own, nobody can accuse you of comforts. They no longer trust me. Sorry. The greed got the best of me. Plus, why would you buy expensive silk? I'll answer that guy. Just as we're about to arrive at Tehran, while minding my own business, one day a man barges into me, and not a moment later, I see a member of the local militia tackle on the ground. Still thinking that the line is tied on matters, I realize that the man uh, the guard is holding more than is a little more than a boy, and that the boy has my bag. To save for the boy. I explained to the militia man that I hired the boy as my servant so that he had stumbled uh, during his duties rather than run away with my bag. He doesn't seem to believe me, but the guard distracted the boy, dropped the bag, and went to the ground. Wait! So that just upped my um, strength, so now I can further increase the weight I can carry. Okay, hang on. Uh, oh yeah, we didn't get actual silk, but still have the cannon and everything. To enter the market, you must pay a tax for each trade good in your inventory. Well, I was looking to buy some food. Should I? Actually, you can't do anything. You've got to pay the damn terror, so... Okay, fine. Pay it. See, price of silk is uh, reduced the further east we go. 
only buy it when you're going to be in town. It's, it's ideal. At least to me. Since we have a considerable amount. Somebody will do. And what little money we have for capes. Not enough to buy a third camel should I increase my intelligence. I think I'm confident. Uh, what's the next place we're going? Merv. 25 days travel. 5 pounds supply. Let's go to it. I know where Merv is. I mean, I've played a Sogdian series before in Xero Kings 2, so I'm very familiar with the whole Silk Road region and everything. Anyways. Oh yes, yeah, this event again. Um, I shall oversee as well. I wonder what they'll think of it, because I need a little bit of that money back. Not surprisingly, there were a number of volunteers to oversee the transfer of wealth next to Kin. Fortunately, my good standing with the locals won me in this position, though there isn't a great deal oversee. I swear to give the money next again the next time in Medina. 48 ducats isn't so bad. So burial for increased uh, local religion opinion. Wealth is for money and goods. Do I get free goods? According to excited chatter of some of my traveling companions, I shall be shopping outside of an inn tonight. It's particularly well known for its hospitality. Um, growing up in Venice, I know it's wise to budget my cons before I start drinking. Let me see. More meal, bed, I'll get it all. Well, since we just got 48 ducats from a, a dead guy, so maybe I'll have it all. The last thing I remember is slamming a heavy pouch onto the tables I ordered another round for my trying companions. Though the rest of the night was a blur, I must have had a great time if I feel this way today. Why does everyone keep slapping me on the back? I was hoping it would improve my health a little. But now it's keeping high morale. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we got the boots. So, I'll just say... Finally, a cure for a common cold. This is a, a cure for all ails. Hope he's not one of them, you know, how they say out west. By out west, we mean like the old west, American old west. <laughs> if you want to be talking 19th century sense. So, you think he might be a snake oil merchant? So, I place a tiny glass bottle in the bottom of my satchel. It takes some time to make sure that nothing's going to damage in the bag. As I accomplished it eventually, I could rest easy knowing that the health is protected for now. A drop from heaven itself. That increases the strength. It's September now. A camel belonging to the caravan has begun facilitating. That the Tatars and the Saracens are excited and they've been taking turns to milk it daily. Taught in the rich flavor and supposed health benefits. Today it is my turn if I wish to try it. I shall try some. I wander up to the camel, which it doesn't react to my presence, and begun pulling on large, viscous udders. And warm, thick milk pours out of my flagon. I bring it up to my lips, not as quite as. Not quite sure what to expect. It tastes creamy, largely like milk back home, as far as I can remember that is. How normal. There you go, a little bit of increased health and intelligence. Because I would like to keep my health up. I'd like to go back to being strong. I don't want to rest. Because, you know, we're on a rush here. As the caravan settles down for the night, I can hear shouts of glee and despair in foreign tongues. Upon investigation, I find a all of my fellow travelers playing a game of chance with dice. I feel my companions shovel over to make some room for them to sit. Again, there ain't any Christians around here, so I'll, I'll bet the ten ducats. You know, I still somehow have some of that leftover money from the dead Saracen. 
After mumbling a quick prayer, I sit down on my large purse and begin to play. The crowd jeer, cheers and jeers of each roll. The game winds down shortly after sunset and made a large profit. Plus. And they say gambling's a sin. By they, I mean, you know, my folks from back home. My folks from back home. Listen to yourself, Lord Master. From Texas. Anyways. One morning, I'm slipping in my boots when I come to the sharp realization that my foot is not alone. I feel a sharp pain as whatever bites me. Recalling a mixture of light pain and fear, a drama would say a snake slid around. There's a snake in my boot! Uh, quick! Someone suck the poison out! It is quite a tall order to ask someone to suck on the foot of a traveler. Luckily, the locals like me enough that after some initial hesitation, a companion relents and sucks the poison out. It's good to have friends, so no health reduction. If I was a strong, healthy man, I'll be sure to kill that snake if it happens to me again. Okay, now let's do a crystal ball that reveals my future. Well, will it reveal prices? I grab the heavy crystal ball and begin to peer into it. After a few hours, I swear to hold it against the firelight at just the right angle and move my hands over to make out some shadows for my future. Will I be rich? To encourage him. Yeah. It's so middle of October now. It'll probably be close to November when we arrive at Merv. So my fellow travelers are usually quite competitive with their cultures. It's never more evident during meal times. This week it's my turn. While I may be the only Latin group, universal feedback is poor. spend some time practicing. It's enough spending ducats on whatever. Let me do some. I just need to get a hang of this over this cooking over a fireplace thing and all. Who knew I couldn't slow roast dried meat on a hot stone? By the next time, well, by the next time, my companion's comparative food reaction is noticeably more muted. Not one of them was sick this time. I increased a bit of endurance skill for once, which would increase the time for the supplies to last. As we continue to eat away at it. Spices are carriers said to carry all sorts of properties back in Europe. From curing diseases to restoring vigors to improving the taste of food, I must say that I'm tempted to see what little powder can do. I bet it will cure my ills. I'll take the small amount of brown dust out of a bag and try to eat it. In a moment of sharp taste hits my tongue, I begin to cough violently. Clouds of spice shoot out of my mouth as I gasp for breath. I pour whatever water I could find in my mouth. That stuff sure is potent. Must have worked. Yeah, it sure did. Increased health and endurance. Which is now novice endurance. So this is gonna last a little longer, so we don't have to keep buying supplies every time we're on a go. Well, rough it then. This is just to keep the morale up. Again, um, again, it's a uh, random events are very repetitive, but uh, that's a common play based on what I saw in reviews. But for me, I don't mind because I'm a much open-minded and very patient person, both in game and real life. I'm a very patient person. Anyways. The caravans are an odd blend of different people, so while I prefer to keep a healthy distance from their strange ways, I couldn't, I can't help but find your cousins interesting. Noticing watching them uh, prepare food, uh, Saracens offered me to dine with them. It smells nice. Again, I'm a nice guy. The Saracen has been most careful in how he prepared his food, from slaughter to the cooking. But to my disappointment, the chicken still taste, just tasted like chicken. Nonetheless, the company was joined with Senior Greed. He'd offer the remainder of the meal to was cook for him. Endurance, opinion increased, and a little bit more supply, a little more chicken. I usually have chicken three times a week. One on Sunday, one on Wednesday, one on Friday. 
Not gonna tell you where I eat them from, but assume they're all fast food stuff. Really. Anyways. Merv. That's where we're at. It's November. Go! 32 travel days away for Kabul. But do you want to risk going in the middle of winter, which could hasten the decline of the health? Um, if you're going to be traveling out in the winter. Hmm. Our supplies are good. Oh, uh, just, it's the terrace again. I'll uh, just uh, turn around right now. Just, just leave, all right? I mean, if I was to work here for a month. And of course, you know, resting with a caravan, which you can only rest for one week. So, I don't think a week will hurt. So, it help us restored. I'm not going to pay no tariffs. The supplies here. Uh, the inventory. Still got the ivory and the first spices. Which, again, taking that ivory to China to sell it so we can buy some silk. Unless I were to make a fortune by other means. But, still got my cat. But I would love to increase my walking speed. Well, I'm going to take a big fat risk. I'm going to Kabul in the winter. Off to the Hindu Kush. Uh, just enjoy the moment with the cat. Sit there, not moving until the sun sets. Time to sleep. I will dream of Venice tonight. Awake or not long. What would my cat to dream of? Everybody knows in trail games, it's dangerous to travel out in the winter. A Tatar in my caravan is putting us the camel owner's shame. Uh, it seems that the camel is second nature to him. Um, entirely unburdened by the name of pull them behind until they tend to their needs. It is as feel um, it is as if he feels himself. Maybe will he he will train me. But then again I don't think they look highly upon me. A tartar laughs, says do not believe me. Staring blankly, it indicates that some gold might incline to help me. Okay. Fine. I was hoping he'll just say, yeah, I'll train you. Because I wasn't too fond of getting way more money. But, screw it. A tartar takes coins and begins the instruction. He's a strict tutor. That he never seems to be off the job. Even hours after I've stopped, he's showing me how to hold the rope. Where to check the cow for diseases. He seems to enjoy explaining his talents as much as he enjoys the money. I think I've learned something. More intelligence. Now I'm an apprentice. Now I can have three camels. Which I hope the camel price is good in Kabul. A local farmer with a rodent problem has offered to let my caravan stay in the barn for the night in return for letting my cat loose on a farm. Hey, we don't work for free. I'm going to need some money back after giving it at Tatar, so... The farmer's incredulous that you want to charge for the service, you know, do it away. He not only refuses, but also blocks my group from accessing to the local well, forcing me to walk to the next village of rest. Enjoy your rants! <laughs> Great. You acted like a jackass on that one. Well, it's winter time now. It's December. While well, the opportunity to stay in a tavern is usually welcome luxury on the world, during winter it is more necessity to break away from the cold. It won't be cheap though, since the other trials have the same idea. Uh, just give me some five ducats for some drinks by the fire. Just to be out of the elements is reward enough. Crack on the fire and a real harp. The warmth from the drinks almost helps you forget the bleak night and then, with the greatest reluctance, venture at sleeping. Can I not rest indoors? Keeps the health up, and that's what matters. 
passing through the lands that used to be known as Bactria around here. Bactria proper. With each passing day, the morning frost uh, lasts just a little bit longer. I build increasingly large fires to help deal with the cold, but after long days walking, I'm already exhausted. Oh, keep building fires. There's nothing for it but to keep foraging for wood. I drag my fatigue body around the camp all evening, but is there anything larger than a twig to burn? I collapse by the fire, exhausted but unfrozen. I should have stayed in Tehran. Yeah, you get winter-related events. It's dangerous. Okay, fine. Ten ducats for room and board. So, by the crackling fire with my feet under a blanket, I can scarcely believe that the world outside is just as harsh as it is. The bitterness of the world drifts away until morning. I must head back into that harshness all the four. The cheaper part is fine. Just wondering if it's any different. Yep, we had to spend Christmas, my Christmas, traveling. The changing temperature isn't only making me sure. As the days pass, I'm finding it harder and harder to find areas for grazing. Though the camel can go for some time without food, shouldn't be put to work with an empty stomach. I'll feed it. Would be lots. We got plenty. I can't stand to see my camel struggling anymore, so I take the rash action of feeding it some of my old supplies. Can only hope I won't need them further in my journey. That's better. Well, Happy New Year, says in the Gregorian calendar. I'm not sure about the Islamic calendar of years. About to be in Kabul. Just hang on. Though surprisingly, we did survive a winter without losing our morale nor health. Okay, you know, I. 162 ducats for a third camel, but. But remember, they tell you, once you're in China, you want to buy silk where it's cheapest there. 18. And only 18. Which means the amount of supplies here. So, should I get another camel? Or just don't at all? And I'm in relatively good condition. Or just work here for a month. But you will just make a bit of profit before moving on. You know, I think it would be ideal to spend a month because I am not sure what's the next destination. It is dangerous and expensive to travel during the winter. It would be wise to rest the city until spring. But uh, that's just a little advice they gave you. Managed to find her leaving soon for a couple. We are in Kabul, are we not? Maybe a little tiger. Actually, no, you're at the party of the waste. Uh, we'll travel in a moment. Uh, I actually gotta work just this once, alright? I'll spend a month here and continue on with one more month of winter. We survived December. I don't think we could survive two more months of winter. Let's just pass the time here. I made a fortune here. Thanks to the, um, High Islam opinion. We're in good condition, so. Uh, where am I? Oh. It's not moving at all, so. Hang on, you know what auto saves, right? So. Try that again. It rests when you're in the city. It's February now.
Okay, you know what? Maybe um, that little advice that's like, hey, don't leave when it's winter. Um, so. How about we work again? Okay, there you go. Fork on road. So, I guess the game does mean do not travel by winter. Please. For God's sakes. <laughs> so, so it's a fork on road. Departing of the ways. For Kashgar in the heart of China. Or onward to Lahore in India. So, one part after the mountains of desert lies the mainland of China. So near to my goal of a mountain of silk, or to India, a land of untold beauty and wealth. Most men would even make dream of making a journey to the land of spices alone. So India is where spices are cheaper. China is where the silk is cheapest. And obviously the contract states, go get silk, so go to Kashgar. It's 25 days to travel. We're in relatively good shapes. And I think supplies can last by then. Most of seem to boil over in the caravan. Saracen at the top. Hey. Five ducats on him. Since I made all that fortune. The Tata, the Tatar, my group is quick to take my bet. Confident in his man's ability to fight. Meaty slaps the bare knuckles against the weather, skin, and chiseled muscles. Make you feel every punch. The fighters seemed equally matched, but the Saracen is tiring. Finally, the Tatar devils knock out blow to the head. Too close to call. Don't you know that Tatars are known for their wrestling? You're thinking of Mongolian wrestling? I've been selected to meet with a local dignitary this evening as a representative of the Latin world. The, the dignitary is well connected with the local merchants. And a caravan master suggested attempting to impress him with a gift could be a great boon. How about 20 coins from varying lands? All that fortune I made. The dictator looks at, at my gift some interest, eyeing on a prince of many coins of varying weights and gold profiles. He brings the ducat before my eyes, asking about my land. The knight draws on as the dictator explains his own land economy, sharing a mini a tip, not for outside his ears. Productive evening. Now we have to start increasing relations with the Confucians, the uh, locals of the Chinese religions that we'll be entering to soon after we get across the Hindu Kush and the Pamir region. While my journey is off to take me to lands of very prosperity, yeah, we had this before. Okay, so here's some money. It's going to be hell, you know. I mean, getting to China is one thing, but the traveling through winter would be another. Even all the way out here, God has sent an omen. A burning star streaks across the night sky with a fiery tail as long as the horizon. Celestial bodies are the work of heaven, and as far as I can tell, I'm the only Christian around for miles. This is just a sign of me. Uh, we should tread carefully. Take the triple then checking everything. Pause to examine every step and bump on a rope to continue on. Takes about a week for me to travel the first mile. Slow and steady, so yeah, bad omen it seems. So that knocked us down a bit. Let's try this. It needs a little some more salt. Not tasting, right? Salt, too moist. Salt, too salty. Salt! I have found a universal ingredient that will save any meat. Any meat. Unfortunately, my propensity to turn any meal into the Red Sea does mean I need a few more ingredients than all. Do you want salt or that? Hello? Oh, we're not moving again. Um, I guess we 
have to load back again. So apparently maybe that was a glitch in the event, so let's try all this again. Yeah, that's what I mean. This game is relatively new, so it's early. Anyways. Plus we, we only didn't reach halfway to Kashka. Not particularly cold evening, I managed to get a wood for a particularly large fire which soon spread into the hedgerow. That's a particularly dry season. In the end, local, a local village had to rush over to prevent it from spreading any further. The village now wants to charge me for both the wood in. Here's both. I'm so embarrassed that I had to agree to terms on the spot. I quickly fork over the coin and begin to set off, hoping to camp at the next village over. The villagers block my exit and insist to spend the night indoors as a request. As a quest. What? Hospitality? Look, when I did this first playthrough two days ago before uh, recording, I did not have any glitch problems at all. Not that before. Local legends say that gi giant. Fire breathing lizards, much like the dragons of yore, dwell in these lands. Though I'm unsure whether I could believe such exotic tales, the local merchants offer me the ground up bones of dragons as cure of all ailments. Tremendous. The healer pours the ground bones into my wine of justice from the solo on one go. I could feel the power of the fiery beast burning inside me. Feel stronger. By stronger, you mean smarter in the intelligence. Oh, there it is again. Hang on. Oh, oh, there it is. You don't need to low back. So I'll be sure to do that next time, okay? When you get a... If you had a little glitch problem or whatever, just, just hit that twice. No need to low back, like I did the last two times, because that's just paranoia, I guess, on my part. Anyways. What is true of Europe is true to the rest of the world, it seems. Even in this far away land, rats still litter the streets, running through refuse and gutters, forming their way in through the smallest gaps. This land is particularly plagued with them. I could use my cat, but let's set some traps. Thankfully, the little devils have little interest in my goods, but the ridded world scourge rats even favor the little people's delicate. Uh, or defecate traps, there you go. I was about to say delicate, but it looks like it's difficult. Defecate traps. Linear every closet. Uh, every campsite I stop in, it will surely be the end of many a rat, even though after I'm gone. I'm the rat catcher. See? You can't outsmart me. According to the excited chatter, some of my tragic pennies should be stopping on Saturday in tonight. To get a well-known for hospitality. Growing up at Venice, I know that you're wise to budget my coins before I start drinking. How about for just a bed? A warm meal and a bed. Oh, such several things have scorned for so long in the pursuit of wealth. I wake up the next day truly refreshed. No ache back, no waking back or sore bones from the hard ground. Back to the road. Back to the trail. This region has seen a great deal of conflict in recent times, and the passing hours has supplied themselves from the villages. In response, the locals have been hiding, have taken to hiding their food from their villages. Having diverted from their path to relieve myself, I've stumbled upon a hidden granary. Take what they could spare. There are bags upon bags of food, though they can afford to spare you some. Parts have not take any more than absolutely need. Turn, I'll turn to the caravan soon after my new found supplies. In a way, I feel teaching them to hide their food better. Kind of like a forced charity. Free food. This 
sun is peering out from the clouds after a full day of heavy rain. Uh, off in the distance, I could just about make out a rainbow, a sign of the covenant that God made with Noah. I'm filled with joy at the sight. I explained to my fellow travelers about this. My fellow companions listened, but did not seem convinced. Uh, Tatar uh, goes so far as that, in fact, the bridge to the heavenly world. Meanwhile, the Hindu claims that it's their war god uses rainbows as a bow for his um, lightning arrows, and Akatha mentions something about dragons. So many ways to be wrong. wonder what the Saracen thinks about rainbows. Maybe they just think the same way as we Christians do. I mean, I'm Christian too in real life, but that's all I'm going to say about that, even though I'm far more open-minded. Uh, tears, man, Duckets, train me again. Up on the intelligence. I'm a journeyman, which I could take four camels with me, but I think I'm just content with two now. I mean, having more camels doesn't make it travel faster, it just increases the weight limit. It's in May now. And I ain't paying no tariff, so... What's the next destination? Kucha. 21 days. We'll get there. We got good supplies. Let's go. No time to rest now. One long day journeying as I crest the hill. I noticed one of my travel companions bass come loose with a camel and land in the ditch by the side of the road. I ran to pick it up but in the hand it they did not have noticed. What's in it? Soak again. Oh we'll just return it at once. I run up uh, behind a fellow and hand him the bag. As the eyes they come so with some confused toy peeks inside, his eyes explode on his head, it bears me. Many thanks as many languages as can handle. It was the Christian thing to do. It wasn't much of a change. I'm resting in a roadside tavern above the general din of the travelers, and locals can hear the faint sound of music. I rise from my bench, finding myself drawn to the sweet sounds of plucked strings, discovering the Tavern's keeper's daughter with the boot. Listen for it for a while. Stop my drinking and listen for a while. With a careful plucking of the cords, the daughter blushes for my attention. It scarcely notices the foreign yet familiar music lulls me into thinking of home. Hours pass before I can return quietly to my camp. Such sweet music. Just want to have morale up. Even though I could have taken it myself, but nah. I'm just content with my cat. Wish I had an old fishing rod, though. As a Venetian, through and through, I can't help but appreciate the Cathar's canal networks. A series of man-made rivers, running as far as the eye can see, transport in goods at a rapid pace across their lands. They are superior. Venice was built upon a lagoon, while the canals may be the fastest way around the city. They lack the ambition of the Chinese. How are they so advanced? Even though you're going across the Talamakan Desert region. Long ago, it was the home of the Tokarian peoples. Nowadays, it's the homeland of the Uyghurs. My little cat has turned into something of a killing machine. It seems that every evening, bodies of dead piled up by my tent. It seems that even young rabbits have become victims of my pet. Free food? In some circles, eating runs might be considered vulgar. Unclean, even. Um, at least that's what it sounds like from what I trust in trust. They're just jealous. Sorry about that. Maybe I should teach my cat something better. Or just ignore it. Merchants' boots are our merchants' lifeblood. Most merchants are more clever than marketeers. At, at least the successful ones are. Some of my boots are off-colored, scraped so there were yet another hole that it might be time to visit the village cover. 
20 ducats will buy the very best. In exchange for my pouch of coins, the ladder worker offers me a beautifully crafted pair of walking boots, built for any weather, for any length of the journey. Uh, my fate seemed to be absorbed into the boot the moment I trod them on. What craftsmanship? There we go. Now I'm a novice. So walking speeds increase so we could get there a little faster than usual. Last night I recalled an age old trap. I have only one glass. I'm feeling today. Between the haze of an early morning and the fog resting in my mind, I have a long walk ahead of me. Time for a family secret cure for a hangover. Though the pounding inside my head is a struggle to remember the old family recipe. Something about a raw egg, a jellied eel, maybe some urine. I placed the piece together close with so vile that I may never want to drink again. Why has my headache not gone? That's bad for my health. There would be two dollars get been prone to um, exploration to be a trade good over to Dow Link to in the Far East, well known for its perfumes. A merchant would attempt to sell me a bulk of Perhaps would be interested to buy personal stock. Oh dear. I'll buy in bulk. This is rather or perfume. Oh, just give me a personal stock. The merchant is barely disappointed by my offer, except some less. The new smell is a wild hit, but people, uh, <laughs> the people actually seem to want to be around me. Once the sneezing stops, that is. What do you think, ladies? <laughs> I don't know what I would do for a personal bulk of that. That would just seem nonsense. Just we're about to arrive at Kucha. It starts a mere chuckle of rain, but the downpour is unrelenting. Though at first it was merely annoying to be constantly soaked and having to pour the water out of the boats, um, the last of all roads of the great silk roads have become dangerous to travel on. We only use stone roads. The paved roads may be slippy, but at least not as dangerous. Unfortunately, this does not extend life of the jury by five days, but nobody's injured. Oh, that's a delay. Not good. Dan Huang, 31 days. Still feeling healthy. We still got a good supply, so I may have to start buying food in Dan Huang once we get there. No time to stop, folks. Here, there's some. It's just to up their opinion even more, which. I don't think they could get any more higher than that. We'll be entering into the desert of Lopt Noor soon. I shall oversee his goods. What does this give me? I'm surprised there were, there were numbers of volunteers to oversee the transfer of the to our next kin. Fortunately, my good standard with locals one means because though there is little oversee. I swear to give the goods next kin next time in Medina. One more silk. Hey, free silk! Which has already been used. Or just not at all, and that text is just deceiving. I don't know. My fur's in my inventory, looking more appealing with each past cold night on the road. There are stock to be bought and sold. Well, they will do little good if I freeze to death before I can make the scene mark at all. I can make a cloak with one. With the simple use of a belt, I managed to fashion a cloak out of a long brown fur hide. The skin is soft to the touch, and the merchant that sold it to me claimed that it was bare skin, so it must be good to keep it out the cold. Last night I started sweating when I sat too close to the fire. This thing is toasty. So I lose that one fur just to make a coat out of it. But much healthier now. Strong. I'd be willing to travel the winter too. Uh, 
An armed wrestling competition broken out in camp, pitching ethnic groups against each other. I'm the only land amongst my group. And thus, with, has thus far been unchallenged. Now an undefeated Tatar is showing off his bulging muscles. We don't know if that's the same Tatar that defeated the Saracens, but... For Venice, for my country, for all up the crowd as I descend to do battle against the Tatar Goliath, rubbing the dirt in my hands and set off against the power of his arms. Lines in his head bulge his face turns red and slowly pushes me down. I watch in horror as my arm folds beneath his. I lost. But that increases the strength. Don't want to bet money on it. And why on earth would I want to be zealous of my own faith for the arm wrestling? A Tatar in my group uh, is made out a great sport of hunting the local wildlife of his bow from birds to rabbits. The camel is made into so many animals, it's starting to look more like a butcher's table than a merchant's back animal. Hey, uh, I'll give you 10, 15 ducats for the bow. He eyes the coins with some interest before laughing and taking them out of the hands. He explains that he has more meat than he'll need for the next few journeys, which gives him plenty of time to buy a new bow. Come at me, critters. Uh, now I have a cat, but now I got a bow for hunting. Hunting bow. Mm -hmm. That Tatar's got talent. Since I adopted my cat, a number of fellow companions managed to pick up cats from here and there. I'd have seen the advantage of having a pet to keep the rats from nipping at their heels while they sleep or want or something caught up to. No need to sell cat. They can always pet mine. My cat is the star of the caravan as my companions watch with glee as the um as as it bats at the camel's tails. Or plays with one of the growing number of cats in my group. Well, people are retired of watching cats. <laughs> Not me. This again. Healthy now. The local guide has offered to show my caravan group a faster one away from the main road. For a price, of course. Some of my troop have opted to have opt the pony up a fee while well, others don't trust him. Somehow it appears that my decision is going to be a deciding factor. Give a boy a ducket. Uh, I reach into the pocket, grab a few coins, and the other child follows suit. The boy snatches the money from my hand and begins to run off. I begin to think that I've been had before he turns around, indicating the I'm going to follow. The boy saved us three days' travel. We jumped ahead. I wish this would happen more often, but only luck would play the factor here. Nan Huang now, but... 26... For Lanzo. I'm going to gamble on it. See if we, the supplies can last. Oh, but so, oh, this again. Five ducats in the local market. I purchase an ornament from the local market. The dignitary, although the faint disinterest in my gift, though he does praise the craftsmanship, the meaning is short. There's only one cost for dictator dictator's service, you know. That didn't go out. Well. Nor did improve relations. Again, tie enough, so don't think of it much. It would seem that God's wrath stretches all the way into the lands of the idolaters as the earth shakes with a thunderous roar beneath my feet. Calm the camels! I hasten to the camels in the caravan on a moment too soon. Even about together, they look ready to bolt. I grip into the um, pleats of their dear life, being thrown by the power of the earth. And the camels, soon the earth sees its movements, and I check my body for bruises. Health just decreases, but uh, health reduced a little. I know it's healthy, but it took a hit. Oh, we must.
must tread carefully. Try my best to maintain the composure to move through the slippery, slippery quagmire that used to be a dirt track. Make it to a nearby village where it takes shelter beneath the first thing with a roof I could find. You don't get this weather back home. Stone roads makes delays. And we can't afford delays. Which, quite honestly, November next year. There's no way we can make it back. No way. One evening, after managing to bag a particularly juicy partridge, a local official appears who was apparently watching from afar. He has the gall to demand payment of a fine for poaching the Lord's game. I'll continue hunting. Ah. Oh. A laugh in the official's face is on Nakanero. His face turns uh, from anger to fear until lucid from another partridge sat on the tree, to which he turns back in anger. I have a tough hunt with him yelling in various languages. All the while, it gives up soon enough. I sure showed him. Well, I'm fit now. But we're just having a little bit of supply. I'll start buying some. Don't know about the rest of to improve health. Got some milk. Had this event before I mine. An expert. A journeyman still. Because I'm getting very smart at this sort of thing. Dealt with. I had luck of poor planning one of the local merchants signed up my caravan found themselves out of supplies on a ticketed barren stretch of food. It's been a few days now and it seems to be getting progressively more You make your own luck, alright? This life is just simple for some people. You design yourself ignoring this plight does stick wrong, disappearing one evening soon to go back where you came from. I ain't got no time. Shall oversee as well. Fifty ducks. Nice. We still haven't reached our destination, and it's getting close to winter. It's a good thing that our health never really. I mean, our morale never deteriorated. I overhear my companions discussing their homelands. Most know something of each other's, being traitors all, but none have ever been as far as me. Most never even made it to Constantinople. I'll embellish a little. I begin to tell what I can remember my homeland, um, the floating city, the canals and wealth, and the gold mine for everyone, uh, which everyone has equal access. My companions suddenly seem enthralled by my story. Now we go to journey west. It is a great land. Almost there, I can see it. One morning I'm slept in on that snooze. Kill it now. Getting chased of the snake. It's quite to see this see a limping man <laughs> chase after some right down. Mention I cornered and the lash out of me to bite me again a knuckle cussing and slam my knife to the snake's skull. Oh, okay, that was a bad move for the health. But it makes it feel good that I done kill a snake. Lon Zoo is just around the corner. Give a boy a duck it. Saved us five days travel. Alright. There's the end goal there. It's right there. What kind of merchants eat this is where's no, because we're almost there, and I'm going to sell some of that and buy some silk from there. And I think the food supplies can even last to there. I don't even remember the last time I bought food. I think the last time I bought it was back in Tehran. How far is it? Fifteen days. So come on. I know it's dangerous, but I'm willing to gamble on it. Empty fields surround me on all sides. A 
but a reminder that even nature decided a hideaway for the season. The local farmers will collect what's left for the harvest and will be eager to show. That seems like a bargain. Such is life. Now I'm starting to get ill. Once we make it there, I'll definitely rest up in the winter, but it's highly unlikely now I will make it to Venice with the contract in time. Spend little. Just keeping the help up. Once we make it to Xeon, it used to be known in, in the old days as Chang'an. Don't need any supplies now. I know it ain't good, but come on, I'm almost there. I know it's not the end of the game because we still have to make it back, but consider this as the end of part one. Part two will be the return. Defeated three rations. No need to carry myself more weight. Once again, spent Christmas traveling. I guess we'll have to accept the fact that we'll never make it in time for the contract. So I'll just go buy your silk and the food supplies and head back and rest up here to restore the health. Okay, one more event. Me and my companions share something of a jovial relationship. We sat around campfires. I'm singing and gambling and drinking, but this winter has turned that around. With huddles of depressed bumps, I'm just all trying to make it through the day and stay warm. We'll still get around the fire. Take the disparate huddle length on the fire for warmth as a form of socialization. Though my companions communicate back in mere grunts, knowing that simply their lips are cold. I still have friends. But look at my health. It's plagued. Oh, we made it. We made it. And look how cheap the silk is to buy here. So if you were to buy ivory, it would be expensive to buy, but more to sell. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the end of part one for this first playthrough here on Silk Road's Caravan Kings right here on the Lord Master channel. So tune in for part two to see the travel back from Zengan to Venice. So we'll rest up here buy some silk which there's no shortage of that here based on what's in the market and then we'll sell some of these particularly the it seems furs are much more valuable commodity here i'll be sure to work here work for one month rest and then get on out of here so tune in for part two of Silk Road's Caravan Kings to see if we can make it back home. But until then, so long for now.